Good morning. Today is Friday, November 17th, 2023. At the beginning of our Torah portion of Toldos, Esav comes in from the field and he is famished. And he says to Yaakov, Yaakov is busy making soup. And he says to Yaakov, Haliteni na min ha'adom ha'adom hazeh. Give me some of this red soup. Later, in the next verse, the Torah says, it is nezid adashim. It's lentil soup. Okay, it's lentil soup. Lentil soup is very nice. So is tomato soup and carrot soup and chicken soup. Why does the Torah have to tell us this detail? Why does it matter to us what kind of soup it is? Seems like a strange detail for the Torah to add. So Rashi says something very interesting. Rashi says, Oso Yom Mes Avraham. That day was a very dramatic and emotional day. That was the day Avraham died. Remember, he was 175 years old. Remember, the Torah told us that his two children, his two sons, Yitzchak and Yishmael, buried him. So that means that Yitzchak and Yishmael are sitting Shiva. Also Yom Meis Avraham, that was the day that Avraham died. So that Yitzchak, Yaakov's father, was sitting Shiva. Vlama Adashim, and why did he make a soup of lentils? Lahavros Es Ha'avel, in order to give comfort to the mourner. So this is a mention of a practice which obviously only comes into existence later in rabbinic history of what we refer to as su'udas havra, the condolence meal or the bereavement meal. And what this refers to is if a person, God forbid, loses an immediate family relative and as soon as they finish the burial, they come back home and they begin to sit shiva. And the first thing that happens when they come home from the cemetery is that they are given a meal. And this meal is called su'udas havra'a, the condolence meal or the bereavement meal. And what Rashi is saying is, at that time in that place, it was the practice to serve lentil soup at that meal. What is the purpose of this meal? Well, there are three purposes to this meal. The first is practical. The mourners have gone through a period where there was a a loss, a tragedy, and they felt intense grief, and they were preparing for the funeral, and it could very well be that in their grief and in their energy to take care of all the details of the funeral, they uh, were not taking care of themselves. Maybe they didn't have a meal. They weren't watching out for themselves. So the first thing is, we get home from the, from the cemetery, you're about to sit shiva, let's make sure you're okay. I want you to have a meal, make sure you're okay. Have something to eat, have something to drink. That's the first purpose. The second purpose of this meal, a detail of how this should be done, is that the meal is served to mourners by others. Someone else should serve them the meal, should make their plate, should bring it to them. And this serves to act as a reminder of one of the fundamental aspects of comforting a mourner. We discussed this before a number of months ago. And that is to make sure that the mourner knows and understands that the mourner is not alone, that the mourner is enveloped by family and friends. And they don't have to go through this alone. Yes, of course, maybe only the mourner is able to grasp what actually happened. It may be unique to them, but they're not alone. And we talked before about how the practice of saying Kaddish means that a person is within a group and other practices of mourning. We want the person to be within a group, to know that their feelings are shared as much as is possible and that they're not alone. But the third reason for this meal is that this meal starts the process of comforting the mourner by feeding the mourner a symbolic food. The food that is served 
is symbolic and it is meant to convey a message of comfort to the mourner. Rashi says, one more time, Oso Yom Avram, this was the day that Avraham died. So that means that Yitzchak was, had come back from the funeral and was sitting Shiva. Vulama Adoshim, why did Yaakov serve a bowl of lentil soup? La Havro says Avel, to give, to feed his father this meal of a condolence meal. Why? Why lentils? Shedomos legalgal, because lentils are round. Lentils are round. Now, that's a similar idea to the Ashkenazi practice, which is to use hard-boiled eggs. Again, hard-boiled eggs are round. Okay, not exactly round, but it's a curved shape. It goes around in a circle. Different places and different times will use different foods for this meal, but the common denominator is they are foods that are round. Why? Our sages explain that this food is meant to symbolize, to remind the mourner that there is a circle of life, that life proceeds in a circular manner. And so the mourner is eating this food, and he or she should be looking at the food, and he or she should remember this lesson. I'm eating around food. I remind myself there is a circular nature to life. What does that mean? Of course, this phrase, the circle of life, was made very famous in The Lion King. But what do we mean by it? What we mean by it is something very specific. We mean by it to refer to the belief that we have, fundamental belief of trias hamesim, that there will come a time when those people who have died will come back to life. The Ramah, Ramoshi Isilis, writes in Shulchan Aruch, the Code of Jewish Law, that by eating around food, we remind ourselves that death is not permanent. Someone who has passed away will, in the era of Mashiach, in the Messianic era, those people who are deserving will come back to life. And what this presupposes is that death is not the end of a person. It is the separation of the body and the soul. The body is placed back into the ground from whence it comes, but the neshama, the soul, which is the essence of a person, that remains alive, available to be reattached to the body at some later point. But the soul is alive. In fact, the Zohar, the primary text of Kabbalah of Jewish mysticism, says that burial, when we bury a person, what we're actually doing is we are planting. We are planting the body for its future regrowth, rebirth. And so this practice of a round food reminding us of this particular cycle of life testifies to the neshama, to our soul. It is not correct that we are a physical being and when we die, that is the end and there's nothing else. It is simply an end. That is not true. That is a secular materialistic vision of the world. We didn't, we, we uh, reject that. We assert that there is, yes, a physical body, but there's a spiritual side, a neshama, a soul. And that is what connects us to God. And that is what connects us to eternity. So we say to the mourner, yes, of course, it's very sad and you're grieving because you don't have that person in front of you, because you can't enjoy that person's physical proximity. Yes, it's very sad. But please remember, it's not over. That person's soul, their neshama exists, is aware of what happens, and has been planted into the earth for its eventual rebirth. And that's a tremendous comfort to someone who has suffered such a grievous loss. So therefore, 
this detail of what kind of soup it is, is not just a detail of the narrative. Had it been a different kind of a soup, like tomato soup or onion soup, it would not have conveyed this message. In fact, the type of soup Yaakov made is, demonstrates an essential truth for Yaakov. In fact, I would say a the fundamental distinction between Yaakov and Esav. Yaakov living a spiritual life, recognizing the importance of the spiritual part of life, which is our connection to a soul which is eternal and connected to God. And Esav, a man of the field, a man of material strength, a man of physical actions, is a person who has a worldview that only looks at what he can touch, only looks and considers as important what one can feel and see, and denies the existence of anything beyond the world, beyond sight, anything intangible, which is why Asaph doesn't care about the birthright. The birthright is not something that is tangible. Asaph doesn't see it, but Yaakov does. There is a part of this, there is a part of us that connects us to our spiritual lives. It goes beyond our physical, visible, material self. That's what connects us to God. But more than that, our connection to God allows us to access strengths within us that are not just physical strengths. A purely materialistic view of life can only value materialistic strength. But we, the descendants of Yaakov, who have a worldview that the spiritual part of our lives is primary, that connection to God gives us the ability to access those aspects of strength, those layers of strength that are not physical or material. I found a poem that I think conveys this very beautifully and is so relevant to what all of us are going through now. Now, the poem was written by Albert Camus, and I don't think he intended it for the message for which I'm sharing it. But I see in this poem this idea that our spiritual lives gives us, give us access to certain strengths that we would not have if we only had a secular outlook on life. The title of the poem is Invincible. In the midst of hate, I found there was within me an invincible love. In the midst of tears, I found there was within me an invincible smile. In the midst of chaos, I found there was within me an invincible calm. In the midst of winter, I found there was within me an invincible summer. And that makes me happy. For it says that no matter how hard the world pushes against me, within me, there is something stronger, something better, pushing right back. And it is this strength that comes from the neshama, the from the soul, from our spiritual lives, not from our physical bodies. It is this strength that Yaakov's choice of soup instills within us for all time. My friends, I wish you a good day and a beautiful Shabbos. And I look forward to seeing you soon in person.